Hi everybody, this is the Baseball Hide, the Amazing Spectacular, it's River the Great One, the People's Champion. Yo, also, hi, welcome back to the Baseball Hut 2, and hopefully you like this video. Hit that subscribe button. So we're going to talk about in this video, Francisco Lindor. Where are we with this guy as a Mets shortstop? Uh, the Mets owe him over $238 million going into next year. Uh, he's got many, many years on a contract. And it's turned out to be a unmitigated disaster in terms of just, he's put up good numbers the last two years, but quite frankly, he's come up very, very short when the Mets have needed him. Um, he wasn't there in June last year when the Mets were struggling to find some kind of offensive output, especially with the uh, uh, the injury to Pete Alonso when he hurt his wrist. Uh, he basically disappeared in September of 2022, did nothing in the Braves series to finish out the season, and did very, very little in the in the two or three games against the Padres. As you remember, in game three of that series, of the wild card series, the Mets only had one hit, and he was not one of them. He was not the, one of the guys that got the hit. So he has been uh, a big symbol and probably a mistake. Uh, by Steve Cohen bringing him in here. Uh, in my in my opinion, you can disagree in the comment section. Um, I had felt from the very beginning that the Mets should, I had no problem with the Mets trading for him, but you can't sign him right away. You don't know how he's going to react to playing in New York. And I felt that there were better shortstops on the market, in particular Corey Seager, going into the 21-22 uh, offseason. The Mets were in such a rush. New ownership was coming in. They were in a rush to make a big splash for a player. They were in such a rush to sign him instead of seeing how he was going to handle New York for the first time. <clears throat> they signed him to a massive contract. And uh, that first year was a, a disaster. Uh, he didn't take well to the town. He didn't take well to the fact that he was struggling. And that he uh, had a difficult time handling the fans, handling us. Uh, instead of letting things roll off his back, he was getting in doing stones down with Javi Baez and a few others like Kevin Pillar. You know, he was doing all this stuff. Uh, it, told, it told me at the time that this was not going to work out in a way that it should. Uh, you can't have that kind of sort of confrontational attitude with a fan base, especially the New York fan base. And he, he had that. But he kind of fell into the fabric of the background because Baez... Was, is more of a polarizing figure in baseball. And he's much more demonstrative in terms of a lot of the things that he does. But um, I felt, and also another thing I felt, was that Lindor was going to break down over the course, the course of this contract because he's not a big guy. And as it turned out, the first year he got hurt. <coughs> Excuse me. The last two years he's been an Iron Man. He hasn't gotten hurt. But like I said, the production... Has sort of gone back and forth. The first, the second year, production was good until September. And then last year was just all over the place. And when the team was completely out of it, uh, then the production started picking up. And now this year has been, it been it's just a mess of a, of a beginning. And the Mets could use a consistent veteran hitter in this lineup that's going to get on base, that's going to drive in runs. And he's been very inconsistent. Now we know he's a slow starter, but enough is enough. Can't be using this while he's done this in the pit. You got to get going. Uh, and this team is searching for offense. Why he's batting leadoff now? I said last year he shouldn't be batting third anymore because I felt that he's not a three hitter. He strikes out too much. He doesn't get on base enough. And and quite frankly, uh, his batting average is too low. With the Mets is two forty nine or something like that. When he was with the Guardians Indians, uh, he was a two eighty hitter. Two eighty batting uh, third is fine. If you hit 249 and you're struggling to, to drive the ball out of the ballpark and you're not driving in runs, you're terrible at runs in scoring position, then there's no reason to bat him third and, and have him get a chance to get... Now they're giving him more at-bats. They're giving him more at-bats, which I think is... It's like that kind of defeats the purpose of giving, giving him less at-bats, taking less pressure off of him. They put more pressure on him. And, and I would mention in the ninth thing on Tuesday... I thought to myself when I said in the video that the that he should have ran, he should have stole second base. He wasn't gonna steal with obviously Pilonzo up. 
But as it turned out, he should have, because then, you know, Pete ground down to a double play. It's a 3-6-1 double play. Uh, but, folks, I've been very fair to this player. Uh, but let's go back to Monday. Monday. The Mets were in, are in Cleveland right now as I record this video. They've lost the first two games. But something happened in this game late in the day, late in the game. I didn't think much of it at the time. But then I saw this little uh, thing, comments back and forth with the clowns at WFAN. And they brought up the fact that uh, Lindor had a close play. And the Mets went to replay and it was overturned. And Lindor was able to throw the runner out at first. And Lindor took a bow. And I'm like, why is he taking a bow? It was late in the game. The Mets are losing in this game. Uh, he has played terribly. Uh, for the past year and a half. What is there to take a bow over? Uh, defensively. It was a bang-bang play. It wasn't like, you know, he, he has not played a good defense this year, by the way. So the idea that he's taking a bow and do why, you know. I didn't think much of it at the time. But now the more I, th I thought about it, uh, that's messed up. Uh, that's take, That's really looking at things in a real lack of seriousness here. Um, us as fans, I think you'll know that. We all kind of look at winning very seriously. We want to play well and have your fun, but winning is a serious thing. Playing every game seriously is very important to us. There has to be a level of seriousness here uh, to be able to handle the, the pressure, specifically being with the New York Mets. a lot of pressure here. More pressure than it is with the Yankees. So the idea that he's taking these bows when the team's not playing well, he's not playing well, uh, says a real kind of... It doesn't seem like he has the sort of sense of urgency. Now, obviously, we're still in May, but it's getting awfully late around here. We're, we're a quarter of the season in. We're a few days away from Memorial Day. And uh, to sort of see that lack of seriousness, the sort of, you know, why, why is he smiling? Why is he taking these bows? It doesn't take a bow over. You know, you take bows when you win. You take bows when you win a championship. You take bows, you know, you only take a bow when you're in a, you know, in a concert. You know, or, or a Broadway show. It's not a Broadway show. You know, and, and they're on the road. You know, it's... It's very, very bizarre behavior. But that's kind of the weird stuff we've kind of seen a little bit. We didn't see it the last two years. We saw it the first year. But this thing about bowing, you know, what's that about? Um, now, that's a lot of money the Mets are going to be paying him. I, I hope to God they figure out a way to get rid of this money. Uh, they made a mistake bringing him in here. He's not going to get any better as a player, in my view. Uh, his better days of pa are in the past. He's 30 years old. He's played a lot of games. He's you know he's putting a lot of innings on the field. He doesn't, never wants to be taken out. It's, that's great, but that's a lot of mileage on the on the car. You know, sometimes it's not the years; it's the mileage. So, to me, um, like I said in other videos, I see half of the Met core gone after this year. Now, are the Mets smart enough to move this contract, to move this guy? It all depends on Steve Cohen. Does he want to eat this money? Uh, and the seven years is a lot for a player that is not going to get any better. He's going to be going on the decline after this. So it, it is quite the conundrum for the Mets to figure out. But we have plenty of time to talk about that or, you know, in the meanwhile. We talk about it. We discuss it. Um, I don't think that's the kind of a move you do in season. But then again, they, they moved uh, Scherzer and, and Berland last year, but it was only one year, two years left on the deal on these deals for them. Uh, but uh, Lindor, different story. That's a lot of years. Well, let me know what you think about this video. And of course, please hit the subscribe button before you go, and I'll see you later.